Um, so the last question, um, is there anything you'd like to talk about in terms of who you are, what your life is like that we haven't covered? I guess a large part or an influencer on my life is is you. Uh, so, I, you know, at some point we have to switch these roles, uh, <laughs> and then the answers that come out will also be an indicator uh, or a fuller picture on on my life. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense. Um... So that's all. That's everything I had. Um, I really enjoyed this conversation even more so than I thought because I knew it would be weird that I'm sending you to this other room and we're having the conversation on Zoom when we could just be talking in person. Um, but I really enjoyed this and I think people um, listening to this will get a lot out of it as well. So thank you for doing that. I hope so. Thank you. This was fun. All right. See you. See you in one minute. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, last question. Is there anything you'd like to talk about, about who you are, what your life is like that we didn't cover? Yeah, uh, I think, I think for, for everyone, it's, it's would be really, um, I think in life, it's really important for in terms of, of balance to, uh, maintain some creative activities and i see some people who don't have that and it, it, it really is something that i think would brighten everybody's life or uh, a tool for like emotional support if you need that like some kind of like tool in the toolbox and uh, i'm sometimes i'm surprised that not more people have some big creative part to their life outside of work mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, we're very lucky because our work is creative in itself but uh, I, I mean, in, in like different realms, more artistic. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I think I think it's not something that people should do just like that. Sh it should be universal and, and mm -hmm. people would be much happier with that. So, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that sounds great. So if there's anything else about your life, um, about who you are, that would be good to share. Um, I'd love to hear that. So, yeah, I think it would be useful to know how you got into the field and what your path was like. Sure. I can just name some of these things. You can edit this out, all right? You don't have to keep it verbatim. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in first grade, I wanted to be a mathematician when I, you know, when I grew up. Mm. And then finally, I settled on being a scientist. <laughs> um, I asked my mother questions about the moon, and she took me to the library to get out a lot of books about the moon, like I was in first grade or something. And that, that just started everything. That started my loving reading. It started my loving astronomy. Mm -hmm. um, and um, let's see. Oh yeah, and and there, I worked at Polaroid as an engineer for six years before I started graduate school at MIT, um, and that helped me sort of gain maturity. I sort of when I first started physics graduate school, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do, but then I. I just kind of through being in a big company as an engineer for six years, I, I figured out what I didn't want to do, which was I didn't want to become a manager. I could sort of see my life before my eyes by watching people at different levels of mm -hmm. the company in, in front of me. And, um, and so then from then, my wife and I went to China, lived there for a year, and that got me out of my rut, and I applied to MIT. I got into vision because I read the book Vision by David Marr when I was in China. And I fell in love with it. It's just such a beautiful, I don't know if you've read it, but it's such a beautiful book. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, and, oh yeah, just about career. So, so by the time I finished graduate school, my wife and I had been married for six or seven years and, and she grew up in the Boston area and she, all her family was here. She really didn't want to leave. And so I had a job search where I was confined to the Boston area. I mean, she, she really didn't want to leave. So, so I applied to Harvard and MIT, and they both rejected. Or they didn't even didn't even interview me. They didn't even reject me. They just they just didn't answer. <laughs> um, and 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 then I applied to Mitsubishi Electric Research Labs, this industrial lab, and they rejected me. And then so I applied again six months later, and they said, okay, let's talk. And then interviewed me, and they offered me a job the second time. Um, 
And then nine years later, um, MIT kind of invited me to apply and I applied and, and I've been there since 2001. Um, and so I've been half of my career in industry and half of it in academia. And industry is so much less stressful. Hmm. It's just easier job. You know, everything's laid out for you. Everyone's telling you constantly you're doing a good job if you are, or you're not doing a good job if you're not, but they're constantly giving you this feedback. Hmm. Um, but on the, but academia, the, the highs are higher and the lows are a little lower, but it's just a higher variance job. And it's a much bigger platform. I'm definitely glad I went into academia. Mm -hmm. so. so I think that's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. How did you decide to transition back towards industry? Um, it was a sabbatical thing. Um, I wanted to do a sabbatical year. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I applied jointly with some former students. And, um, and then I liked it, you know, we're having a good time. So, um, but I didn't want to leave MIT. And so we've kind of come up with a situation where I'm both at MIT and at Google. And um, so far, so good. It's working out well. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's everything I had. Um, okay. If there's, yeah, go ahead. Were you going to say something? Um, no, I mean, it's funny. I, you know, I'd be happy to maybe not now, but sometime in the future, hear your answers to an analogous <laughs> question. Or, or maybe you should have someone interview you and you could, we could post that as well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a I couple of, to, yeah. Yeah, Sorry. I was going to say a couple of guests have brought this up as well. <laughs> and so it's funny yeah. that you mention it. But yeah. Anyway, um, I enjoyed the questions. They were great. You're such an attentive listener. I appreciate that. Um, I uh, I hope I didn't embarrass myself too much with the questions, with the answers rather. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, but, I don't. I mean, I don't. I don't think so. I think it was. Um, they felt like honest responses, and I think that was really useful to um, hear. And I think others will probably appreciate that as well. Okay. So I know I just have two more minutes of your time now. So is there anything else that we should have talked about about you, your life that we didn't that we didn't get to? No, I think we got to a lot. It's like a very interesting questions. <laughs> yeah. I had an existential crisis, you know, when I was turning 30 and I got super depressed and anxious. And so when you were talking about like, um, is there a point to life? I remember this feeling of like emptiness and it's the worst, I think it's the worst feeling. In the, and I think that that comes with like clinical depressions, like this feeling of just nothingness. And I think that's that's really the worst feeling. But I think that is sometimes the most accurate um, description of, of things. But mm. it's just not a sustainable kind of way of feeling. approaching life. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there okay. anything that we didn't get to about you or your life that you think we should have talked about? I think so. Um, not necessarily, but I think it would be kind of interesting to learn, like if I were learning about researchers to hear about like their backgrounds, like where they kind of like where they came from, what kind of families, mm -hmm. um, how yeah. they, what it was like growing up. Yeah. But that's yeah. like a whole different set. That would be a large, <laughs> potentially <laughs> like a big set of questions. Yeah, yeah. No, but that would be interesting that uh, that came up with some of the other um, guests in the context of other other some of these other questions. Um, yeah. But if you are willing to share, it would be, yeah, I'd love to hear more about that. Um, sure. So I'll just say a little bit. So I grew up I grew up in upstate New York in a rural area. It's, it's it's called upstate, but it's like two hours from New York City. So sometimes people think it should be downstate, but <laughs> it's uh, but like where I grew up, I, I was like in a neighborhood, and then everything is like fifteen or twenty miles away. Most of my friends and and like businesses and all that stuff oh. is on a lake, um, and um, my parent like my my family was all like kind of well educated like everybody my grandparents had all gone to college which is kind of unusual mm. um my my many people were, were like small business 
people, like had local businesses. Mm -hmm. um, but nobody had done PhDs or anything like that. So I remember like one time when I learned, when I heard that somebody was getting a PhD, I asked what it was and they said a philosophy, a doctor of philosophy. And I said, well, why would anyone want to study philosophy for their, for like several years? <laughs> <laughs> didn't really have any idea what it was. <laughs> um, but I just had, uh, like, I had a, I guess I was lucky that I had a computer pretty young. My dad brought home a PC junior when I was like five and I was able to like do some things with that on my own. Hmm. Um, but otherwise, like I mostly focused on like just sports and playing and, and I like, I always liked games a lot and would, would play a lot of games. Um, and I had a kind of, I think in many ways, a, a kind of idyllic childhood. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, that, that sounds nice. Yeah. Is there anything about you or your life that you think would have been useful to talk about that we didn't get to? You did a great job covering a lot of things. I think one thing about my life that I now, um, find valuable is that I've actually grown up all over the world. I moved uh, when I was young. And I think at the time, I just took it for granted. But now I actually see that it gave me uh, a lot of, a lot of, a, a very valuable perspective mm. on how people in different contexts are very different, but there's something really interesting to see in each of these places. And that to come up with some stack ranking in your own mind is really unhealthy. Um, and I think it helped me uh, appreciate the world in a better place. Doesn't mean that that's the only way to get there, but I think for me that journey I think was was valuable. Um, it happened at a time, you know, bef so many of the people I knew from that time I don't necessarily have stay in touch with because it's pre-internet and not. But but I think the experiences have been valuable for me hmm. in shaping you know how I got here. Interesting. Yeah. Is there anything else about you or your life that you think we should have talked about that we didn't get to? Um, let's see. I don't think there's other things. So right now it's a bit kind of regular. Uh, um, so I think uh, like all the people who are kind of locked, being locked down in this space, I think mental health is probably one important thing because kind of, I don't know how, because there's no, we're in a turnover, we haven't seen the light yet, right? So we don't know how long this will be. So being able to um, uh, kind of maintain a good mental health is also important. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, and uh, I try to try to manage that by, by kind of remove all the, most of the tasks in the morning, um, so that I can uh, be less anxiable and, and, and uh, like anxious, mm -hmm. um, right? So, but but I'm still learning that uh, how to best manage the time and um, best manage the expectation uh, in, in in a way. Um, yeah, but I, I'm sure that all probably kind of most of the people are. Who are in this case in in this situation are in, in experiencing our hardship. Um, so I guess the, um, there's not much we can do uh, in terms of the. Uh, I guess this kind of we have to be more uh, tolerable with others when they don't respond. They are not responsive or they are not uh, that. Uh, reaching the, the the expectation, like remember that they may be experiencing uh, same similar hardship. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. 